This week I'll show you how to overpower the sun using a speed light. Adorama TV presents Exploring Photography with Mark Wallace, where you will learn innovative techniques on shooting a wide range of photography. Here's your host, Mark Wallace. Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of Exploring Photography. I'm Mark Wallace. Well, a lot of people have asked me how they can overpower the sun with a flash, specifically if you're in an environment just like I am right now, nasty sun coming in from the side, it's just not a good place to be. So what they wanna do is have this flash that's so bright, bah, it overpowers the sun. Well, that's sort of a misnomer. You can't really overpower the sun, but what you can do is you can underexpose the ambient light, and then in bright light like this, well, we're gonna use a special feature on our speed light called high speed sync. And that is going to allow us to shoot with faster shutter speeds so that we can underexpose the ambient light and then get that look that looks like you're overpowering the sun with the flash. Now, to show you how all of this works, I have asked Leanne to join me. And this is Leanne's very, very first Adorama TV video. So welcome to the show. We're gonna set some things up and we're gonna first show you how to underexpose the ambient light. And then we're gonna show you how to use high speed sync to really get that look that you're looking for. So we'll do that next. All right, so we've set up a few things here. Now, let me talk about the gear that I'm using to do this. I have my Canon 1DS Mark II, my trusty standard, with a 70 to 200 millimeter lens. And uh, I'm gonna shoot first without a flash, but when I do use the flash, what I'm using is a Canon 580EX2 that's back there. And I'm triggering my flash with a Flex by Pocket Wizard. So I've got two Flex TT5, one's a transmitter on my camera, one's the receiver, they're both transceivers technically. And that allows me to, uh, control my flash wirelessly. So that's how we're doing it. But what I first wanna show you how to do is to underexpose the ambient light. And so that's what we're gonna do first, and this is what you should do when you wanna overpower the sun. Really, you're underexposing the sun. So let's see what we get when we just do it normally. So I'm gonna take my uh, camera here, take it off the tripod, and I'm going to use my internal meter on manual mode, and I'm looking through here, and this is about 500th of a second at F5. I want some shallow depth of field. And when we look at this picture, Blech, it's horrible. We have these really nasty shadows, and so we don't want that. We want to knock that out and use our flash as our primary source of light. Now, one of the problems that you're going to have when you're using a speed light or a studio strobe is there is this bumper where this uh, shutter can only go so fast. That's known as sync speed. And normally that's around 200, 250th of a second, somewhere around there. If you don't know what sync speed is, I did a great video on it in episode 17 of Digital Photography One-on-One. -on -one. So check that out. You can go to the Adorama Learning Center and read all about it. But if you don't know what sync speed is, read about that. But what we need to do is we need to get past sync speed. We need to be able to shoot at much higher shutter speeds so that we can underexpose the ambient light. Let me give you an example. So what I wanna do is I wanna make everything dark. So all I have to do is, I'm gonna raise this up, is increase my shutter speed. So I'm gonna leave my aperture at F5 so I have shallow depth of field. I'm going to increase my shutter speed. I'm gonna keep going all the way up to about 2,000th of a second. And that shows me in my internal meter that I'm underexposed by two stops. So really dark. Let me just take a picture. So Leanne, look right at me. Beautiful. So I take a picture there and I look and yeah, Everything is really dark, underexposed. And so basically we've overpowered the sun by underexposing the sun, that's how you do it. The next thing we need to do though, is turn on the flash. Now for our flash to work at 2,000th of a second, we have to turn on high speed sync. Now unfortunately, you do that a number of different ways depending on your flash, the camera model you have, the brand of the camera. So if you have a flash and you don't know how to turn on high speed sync, here are some tips. If you have a Canon flash, you turn it on right on the flash itself. And so depending on the model of flash you have, there's buttons, there's dials, and maybe in the menu. So look at your user manual, and we decided not to show you the specific steps because it would take us 20 minutes to show you all the flashes. But you need to turn on high-speed sync. If you have a Nikon camera, then normally you turn on something called FP sync, focal plane sync, I think that's what it stands for, FP sync, and that's in the menu on your Nikon camera. And so um, we've got a bird here that's joined us. Very loud, I like the little bird. Anyway, so uh, that's how you turn that on. Um, if you're unsure, then you can always post comments right here on our YouTube channel. And I'm sure there's someone that's gonna jump in and tell you how to turn on high-speed sync for your specific camera and flash. Now I'm using the Pocket Wizard Flex system. And the nice thing about that is high-speed sync is turned on automatically. You don't have to do anything to your flash. You just roll the shutter speed 
and it will turn it on if it's needed. And that works both for Nikon and Canon, which is really nice. And that's why I'm using the Pocket Wizard Flexes because it does it automatically for me. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to turn on my flex. And then what I'm going to do is I'm first gonna take a calibration shot, which is required. And so we have that, that makes sure that the flash is operating properly. And now that we have that done, I'm gonna roll my shutter speed back up to 2,000th of a second. So I'm shooting at 2,000th of a second at F5, and we know that at those settings, the sun is going to be uh, underexposed, but my flash is gonna give me a proper exposure on Leanne. So Leanne, I want you to look right at me. Yeah, and turn a little bit toward that flash, just a little bit with your shoulders. There you go, beautiful. And I'll take a shot here. And now when we look at this, check it out. We have overpowered the sun. We've underexposed the ambient light. We have a proper exposure from our flash, and that's how it's done. Now, the thing is, uh, if you're wondering what settings I'm using on my flash, I'm just using auto mode. It's in full ETTL mode, through the lens metering mode. I'm not doing any kind of exposure compensation or anything like that. The flash is smart enough to know how to figure it out. And that is how you overpower the sun. Now, there's a couple more things I need to explain. So to do that, we're gonna hop in the shade and give you the final thoughts on using high-speed sync. Well, there are the basic steps for overpowering the sun. Just underexpose the ambient light, make sure your speed light is in high-speed sync, or just use a mini inflex or two flexes from Pocket Wizard, and that will automatically do the job for you. Now, you've probably noticed that we used a speed light with no diffusion, no light modifiers, so you might want to use a uh, softbox like this guy here. This is an easy box hot shoe. Um, the problem with that is as soon as you put a light modifier on your speed light, it is going to absorb so much light that it's going to be very, very difficult to shoot a full length or even a half length shot because you have to have the flash so close to your subject. And so what I suggest, if you want to use a softbox or an umbrella to get a little, bit, uh, a little bit softer light, what you should do is you should shoot in a shady area like I'm in right now and then choose a background that's darker uh, and that will allow you to do that. Or you really need to shoot at a different time of the day. So the technique I just showed you with high speed sync is sort of a last ditch effort. If you just absolutely have to uh, make it look like you're overpowering the sun, you can do that. But I recommend that you find better light, modify that light and get better looking light than the light that we just showed you because it's just a little bit too harsh for our needs. The other thing I did that I didn't mention is I actually took the flash and I put it up like this and then I twisted it and then I was able to put it down and that allowed us to have a flash that was vertical and that allowed us to make sure that we illuminated all of Leanne's uh, body. So if I had it normally, it would be horizontal and then we would have a band of light. And so we've also done some videos previously about uh, orienting your flash. And so that's why this looked a little bit wacky because I did that to make sure that we had good light on Leanne. Speaking of Leanne, let's say thank you to her. She was a great help today. So thanks a lot. I'm sure we're gonna see a lot more videos to come. And I wanna thank you for watching. Remember, if you have questions about photography or photography gear, just zip over to the Adorama Learning Center. There's a wide variety of articles and videos that talk all about that. Ask us questions right here on our Facebook page or our YouTube page, wherever you happen to be watching this from, and then we'll try to get back to you with answers to that. And if you see somebody ask a question and you know the answer, well, jump in. And we are a community. We want to help people out. We want to help people become better photographers. And last but not least, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. That way you don't miss a single thing that's coming to you from all the great contributors right here on Adorama TV. Well, thanks for watching and I'll see you again next time. Well, uh, it meters at about 600, 500 of a second at 5.0. And so when I look at this picture, wow, it's really nasty. Those, am I pointing to that? Sorry. Is that right? Yeah. I'm gonna take this bush out of the back here. Well, let me make sure that's good. Want to get the most out of your Adorama photography equipment? Visit our learning center where you can read popular articles, how-to tips, buying guides, and product reviews.